What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this video. In this series we will create an endless runner in 3D using Unity. In the last episode we created and set up our project, chosen some assets to start with and we coded a simple camera and character movement controller. Today we will take care of the road so that it gets endlessly spawned as the player moves through the level and like always we will do it in a quick and dirty fashion, simple and easy. So let's hop into Unity and start coding. Let's start by setting up our road prefab we want to spawn. So I create a new game object and um, call it road. And I drag my two road models in there. Now I just need to make sure my transform isn't all messed up. So let me clean this up real quick. As you may or may not remember, one road model was 30 by 30 meters. So. And there we go. I also add a cube to my road and I call it spawn trigger. Now let's set up the position. Um, I want it to be at the end of my road prefab so that it gets entered before the player enters another prefab. Um, let's see. Ah, okay, let's make it 30 meters wide. Okay and maybe 10 meters high. Not sure how high we will allow our player to jump, so let's adjust that real quick. Yeah, looks fine, all right. Now I simply remove the mesh components so that it's basically an empty game object with a box collider. And let's change the collider to is trigger. Let's also tag this one as a spawn trigger, not sure if we need it, but um, I create another trigger. And set it for my game object. Alright, so far so good. I think it looks kind of empty, so let's see if we can find some kind of a street lamp in our assets or something like that. Let's go to our low poly ultimate pack folder and let's uh, let's quickly take a look around if we can find one. Nope, not as far as I see. So then let's go to the simple town assets. Um, towns usually have street lamps. Huh, um, not quite the right one. What is this? I guess some part of a road sign or something like that. Yeah, that looks like a street lamp. Uh, let's go with this one. Now let's see where we place it. Um, okay. I switched to the isometric top view to have a better perspective. Uh, let's maybe place it between the two road models. And let's also rotate it on the y-axis so that it faces the road. Uh, yes, minus 90 degrees should be it. And I also adjust it on the x and z-axis. Now let's see how that looks. Not sure if it should be a little bit on the sidewalk or just on the grass. No, I guess I'll leave it like that, um, at least for now. Maybe I will adjust it in the future. Okay, looks fine. So then let's now create our prefab. But first we need to create a prefab folder. Um, now I simply drag my road from the hierarchy into my folder in the project panel and the prefab is done. Let's now duplicate it for a few times and let's see how many of them we need. Let me quickly explain how I imagine it to work. So we have a few road prefabs laying around, which contain some sort of a trigger at the end. As the player progresses and enters the trigger, we simply move the road behind him to the front, so it should behave like being endless. The big advantage of doing it like this is that we don't have any actual spawning going on, and this will contribute to having good performance, which is very important on mobile devices. I'm not completely sure on how many I want to use of them, uh, maybe I will adjust that later at some point, but now I don't want to waste too much time on the decision right now. 
so let's just go with that i think that it's a good number let's check that out in the game mode real quick Hmm, maybe I will add one more. And I add one more right before the first one. Alright, looks fine now. Now let's create ourselves another empty game object uh, which will act as some kind of a folder. And let's uh, reset its transform real quick. Now I drag our roads in there so that we don't have too much chaos going on in our hierarchy. I just double checked to make sure our transforms didn't get messed up. Um, looks fine. Now let's create another empty game object and let's call this one Spawn Manager. I now navigate to our scripts folder and I will create two new scripts. One will be our Spawn Manager. And the second one will be our Road Spawner. Now I drag both scripts into our spawn manager game object in the hierarchy panel. And also that transformation bothers me, so let's uh, clean that up real quick, although it doesn't really matter at all. So now, let's edit our road spawner script first. So let's open it up in Visual Studio. First, let's create ourselves a public list for our road prefabs. I call it roads. And we need a float for our offset, which basically represents the length of a road. That was uh, 30 meters since we used two 30 meter road models. Now let's go back to Unity. Let's first change the list size to 7 and now let's drag all our road prefabs into the list slots. Okay, let's go back to Visual Studio to our road spawner script. Now what I like to do is to sort it in our start method so that we don't get any issues if we accidentally don't get the completely right order while dragging them into the list in the editor. Let's order it really quick by transform position and Z to list. Now it basically should get ordered um, at the start and we would always have the right order to work with. We don't need the update method, so let's delete it. Um, and I want to add another public method, which will be responsible for moving the roads around. I call it move road. Like mentioned, we will just take the first road and reposition it so that we don't have to instantiate anything at all, at least not for the road. So we create a new temporary variable called move road. And let's take the first element of our list Now we remove the first element from our list. And we create a variable new z to calculate the new z value based on the last um, element's position and our offset. So we type roads and use the count minus one as our index, uh, since the index starts with zero. Then we need to get the transform, position and z and we just add our offset. That's our new Z coordinate. Now we set the position of our temporary safe game object. New vector 3. For X and Y we just set 0 and for the Z value we use our new Z. And last but not least let's add our game object to the list again and it will get added to the end of the list so we don't have to reorder it again. Alright, that's about it. Now we just simply need to call the move road method whenever one of our triggers gets entered. 
Okay, now let's return to Unity. And let's check out real quick if our ordering works. Um, so I just messed it up real quick. One second. That should be fine. Now I go into my game mode and see if it works. Yeah, see it's all fine now and gets sorted correctly. I go into the scene to double check if the positions are correct. Seems to be fine. All right, very good. Now we need to edit our spawn manager script next. So let's open it up in Visual Studio. First, I create a public variable for the reference to a road spawner and I use get component to pull it. Should be okay. Now I create a new method and call it spawn trigger entered. And in it I just call the move road method of a road spawner and that should be it for now. Now the last thing we need to do is just to simply react whenever the player enters the trigger. So let's do that in the test uh, character controller we created um, for now and uh, open that up in Visual Studio. We add a new method um, called onTriggerEnter which gets called every time the player enters the trigger. We also need a reference to our spawn manager, of course, and I create a new variable for that. I just call it spawn manager. And now whenever the player enters the trigger, the spawn manager trigger entered method of our spawn manager gets called. And that should be about it. So now let's head back to Unity and let's test how it works. When we focus on the street lamps in the back, we should easily see if a new road gets spawned. Which not seems to be the case. Ah, of course, we forgot to drag our spawn manager reference onto the player. So let's do that really quick. And let's try it again. Uh, it's still not working properly. Let's see what went wrong. Ah, I forgot. Um, of course, we need a rigid body component on our player. So let's add another component. Um, let's search for rigid body. Make sure not to use the 2D one. So now let's give it a try again. Let's again focus on the street lamps in the back to see if anything happens. And it looks like it's working properly now. We have managed to make ourselves an endless road. I now go back to the scene pretty quick to double check it if all works uh, like it should. Looks fine till now. Let's drag the player along the z-axis and let's see how it behaves. Let's zoom out a bit first to have a better view and let's see. Yeah you see, works perfectly fine. The last piece of the road gets moved to the end when the player moves forward. Of course when moving back the road won't get moved back. Um, I mean it could easily be implemented, but uh, since it is an endless runner and we will always be moving forward, there's no need to do that. Alright, seems like we did it. We managed to finish the prototype of the road behaving like in an endless runner. In the upcoming episode, we will create some content besides the road, like houses, trees and other stuff. And we will make it spawn randomly as the player moves through the level. If you liked this video, please leave me a like, subscribe to stay updated, or if you have any questions or want to share your feedback, please also make sure to leave me a comment. I'm out guys, see you in the next episode, bye bye.